Musical Club brought the official charts and National Album Day. And now proudly in association with Bowers is at the Thank you very much for joining us. We are very excited islands to talk all about the brand new album as long as you are if you're new to the record club we're going to be spending the next half an hour talking to sam about the brand new record and then we'll be putting your questions about the album so if there is anything you would like to know about the brand new record whether it be about a certain song the artwork a particular lyric that you've enjoyed drop us a question in the comment section below and i'll be asking a selection of them in the second half of our chat and not forgetting one lucky person who sends in a question today will be randomly selected to win bowers and wilkins px7 over ear noise cancelling headphones which i'm sporting right now and i'm telling you everything's sounding delightful it's a hugely special prize so make sure not to miss out and get your questions to us so let's jump straight into this week's record club and say hi to sam from future islands <laughs> <laughs> Hey, what's up, Jess? I was practicing that like three times. You were killing it with your opener, and I was, I was like, don't make her laugh or stop doing these funny faces. Honestly, it was uh, keeping keeping me smiling, uh, watching the shimmy coming onto the screen a little bit early, but it's fine because you're getting your practice in. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> so I know that you're in Sweden right now. How is it? Um, everything's cool here. I've, I was just, I was just telling you a little bit about it, but I've been trying not to tell my friends how it's, uh, it's kind of normal here and it's really weird. I mean, people know that there's a huge issue in the world, but everybody's just going about their days. You know, I just had a, had a beer out, you know, it's, it's normal. It's weird. We're very jealous over in the UK, um, yeah. but hopefully we're all kind of staying safe, staying sanitized and stay safe and sanitized. Yeah. Staying sane as well um i've got to say a huge congratulations on the release of your third you yeah, how was it in the making for you has it been has it been like a covid album or not that i want to brand it like that at all <laughs> but um has it been born was it born before this the pandemic or was it in the making during how's it all been for you yeah i mean we we actually we've tracked the album between january uh, 2019 in January 2020. So we actually we tied up the ends of this the album right before the pandemic hit. Uh, but the mixing of the record was was during the pandemic, and I had returned home uh, to Baltimore from Sweden, where I was with my partner uh, on like early March, and then within two or to to finish mixing the record or to begin mixing the record, and then uh, within three days, like you know, the world started locking down. Um, so I was you know I was not able to return back to my partner for five months. Um, and, you know, I never even saw the guys for th three and a half months. Um, and we ended up, we mixed the record over Zoom um, and an audio program that our, you know, our, our sound engineer could be at the studio in Baltimore, plug into this uh, audio server, uh, Hi-Fi Sound, and then we could listen in. But then we were also on a Zoom chat looking at each other and talking through things. And I mean, honestly, <sighs> Um, <laughs> with the way that everything was going, I think it actually allowed us to uh, find even more um, space and comfort in in the creation and uh, in finishing the record to uh, to uh, kind of embrace the things that we had already been doing. And in taking this whole year to record an album was about us kind of taking control, uh, taking the time, not thinking about deadlines, not thinking about the business side of things, but really focusing on the art. Um, mm -hmm. And so in the end, uh, our deadline got any kind of arbitrary deadline got extended even more where we're like, well, now we don't know like when this record needs to come out or can come out. So we really took our time with it and uh, and just uh, got to a place where we were all happy, which I mean, honestly, it's crazy, but we've never done that before. We've never we've never had a record that we were all happy with uh, individually and as a group you know i think i think we've all been happy with the albums as groups before but but uh, individually you know you always have little problems here and there like things that you wish you had done but you kind of have to compromise to to make the group work you know sometimes you have to compromise your feelings on a song or certain certain issues to make things go forward but on this record it was like 
we didn't want to have anybody have any problems. We we're like, what if we made a record where everyone actually <laughs> was able to work out their problems? So that was, I mean, a big thing in this record was just like finding that trust in each other um, and and uh, and completing something on on our own on our own terms, you know. I'm definitely picturing something very futuristic where the person in the studio is sat here and he's got a big screen of your all your faces on the Zoom chat. Uh, maybe it is something of the That's future, kind of to what be it was. Yeah, <laughs> for Steve, yeah, for yeah. for our, for our co-producer and engineer, yeah. He's got, he just has this giant monitor. So he's like looking at us and mixing things. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, his studio is like his living room. So he's there all the time anyway. So he was happy. We were all happy. It's really, it's nice to, you know, cause being in the studio is like being, it feels more like you're at a job, you know, you feel like you're really, um, you're always paying for it, but you're like, <laughs> but when, when we're at home, I think it allowed us to just kind of feel the comfort of home and, uh, and yeah, just not get so fatigued, you know, sometimes you get ear fatigue or you're just like, I want a snack or, you know, <laughs> like, like you just want to, you just want to put your feet up. And so we were literally at our homes with our feet up, like talking and listening and, and going through, through issues together. Yeah. And if you're each looking at your own screens and kind of plugged in yourself, but feeling rather comfortable, I guess you can sort of wave a magnifying glass and you know exactly which elements that you want to input and and you don't really miss anything either. So, yeah, no, it's, it's definitely a, a good feeling and a good all round feeling from the album as well. Start to finish. Uh, I definitely want to speak to you about the opening. The first sounds that you hear are, I want to say, geese. Yeah, and yeah. the sounds of nature um how did you guys figure that as the as the opener the first thing that you hear well it's kind of funny because the ideas of the bird sound which is something that we've we've used on past records um and even you know the titles of other birds vireo's eye which is a song from our second album was probably the first time uh we had used the name of a bird uh but but somewhat of a recurring thing i mean that was a nod to a poem by Theodore Retka, but um, but the the song is titled Glotta, which is a type of bird uh, known as the red kite um, that's, that's found in the southern region of Sweden, as well as in uh, the northern, uh, I guess, the northwestern part of Europe. Um, and just these great big, you know, swooping birds that, I mean, it's called a glotta, but it's kind of like a glider, like it's it just floats you never see it flap it's flap its wings but it's just circling all day just beautiful giant birds and um uh but but the reason the idea of the the bird sounds came at the beginning of the song was because there's actually this uh kind of uh it was a reflection of the the bass pedals that william uses on the song um where I was hearing these sounds when, when we were coming up with the the early stages of the demo. And I was like, are those, did you put like bird sounds in there? And he's like, no, that's just like the way my, my pedal is like reflecting in its own, you know, wiring or whatever. It's just like a sound, the sound of the bass in a weird way. And I was like, that's awesome. So we kind of started to talk about it because I was already, when we first wrote that song, I was just like, this is an opener. You know, it feels like the, the opening chords of Garrett um Garrett's keys just like it always felt like entering into a space like like parting the marsh grass you know and like walking into a new into a new zone like feeling like you're entering into something so I think it was just about trying to capture that that feeling fully of uh not only stepping into nature but stepping into into kind of a, a warm a warm place out outside of yourself I did really feel like I like visualized just being there and for a moment I was definitely transported and um and like you said so I thought maybe it was a place I thought Glada was maybe a place but that's quite exciting that it's a type of bird I feel like over lockdown I've noticed you know how we were allowed to just go on a one walk a day and doing things like with my housemates just kind of bird watching and um I noticed that some of them didn't even know what certain birds were an animal planet knowledge from back um, <laughs> I feel like I've learned something as well a bird from Sweden and uh, I've also got the vinyl right here 
Um, and the artwork looks amazing too. You were telling me a little bit about it uh, just before we went live as well. Um, could you, yeah, tell us again about this? If it was a painting or uh, if it was a picture. And the funny thing is, is I'm not really sure. Um, so that the, the the album art uh, was developed uh, with with an artist named Vlad Sapatov, and he uh, we we brought him in to kind of help us lay out, you know, like mood, like creating mood boards, like like images that we all liked individually, and putting them together and kind of seeing things. So we were already starting to kind of develop the ideas of uh, of this this house on water was was kind of where we were we were coming to and at the same time we were working on the first sing the mu music video for the first single uh for sure with another artist named samuel j mason who is a friend of Vlad. while while sam was ma making this video that's like you know two self-driving cars driving and kind of chasing each other in like a strange love story through a, an apocalyptic landscape um things kind of like beautiful but overgrown growing over you know nature taking over again um they, they were actually working together to create the, the bit of i think it's a little bit of collage and a little bit of digital um digital manipulation and creation you know i remember how they talked about how the lights on the house they actually we got different versions where they were kind of pointed in different directions um where it was nighttime like how the house would look so they're actually kind of they were able to kind of get to a place uh where they felt comfortable and we felt that it, that it spoke to what we were trying to go for but but yeah that, i'm like you guys are <laughs> other stuff like i don't i went to art school i don't know any anything I yeah i kind of i kind of did art at uh, a level but i was just looking yeah. at it and at, at first glance it kind of looks like this amazing photo and then you think actually how is that house right in the middle of the water yeah. <laughs> and uh, and then it, it looks more like a painting and you think wow that that is amazing artwork so uh just shows that everything you see online can be digitally enhanced yeah. made or completely <laughs> made up but um no really and like, like i said straight from the first song song as well with uh, all the amazing imagery um would you say that your physical space and like where you are is a big influence then on on your music and this record um yeah yeah you know sweden plays a big part um in uh in the album uh for sure is also the second song uh, on the record after glada is also speaking to the swedish countryside and most particularly uh this a granite water hole that's uh, up, up, just like a half kilometer up the hill, up the mountain, the Swedish mountain. It's just a big hill, um, <laughs> and and you know we go swimming there every day in the summertime uh, and in the spring, uh, and it's just been a part of a part of my life there, a part of my life with my partner, um, and uh, yeah, so it's affected me in that way, but also in the same way that uh, a part of the emotional space. That's that's an even I would say an even bigger part of the record um kind of you know this this record was uh written exploring 2018 and 2019 those were the early you know the the, the first or i guess the the full second year and the third year of uh my current relationship and uh you know part of part of going through that is is uh understanding the good of what you're in <laughs> at the time you're understanding it being afraid of it feeling good because you don't want to lose it again and also kind of when you're when you're in those stages of a healthy relationship it it kind of allows you to see the the bad of other relationships um and and places that you put yourself in that maybe maybe you held on too long and that hurt someone else maybe someone else held on too long and that hurt you maybe both of you held on too long or you know, <laughs> it's it's like just I think being in the physical away from myself allowed me to look back at myself face even more so um, and feeling really uh, a, a comfort. You know, that's spoken to in Glada most definitely like that, that pleading. Do, do I deserve the sea again, which is the sea is the good and the bad, but but feeling, you know, feeling again. Do I deserve this feeling for, 
for sure, which is the jumping, you know, jumping off the cliff into the water with that feeling of like exploring darker things. And I knew you and city's face. Um, and then going into like about accepting love, um, accepting the love that's given us. Um, and that's not only about accepting someone else's love, but it's about learning to love ourselves. So these are, these are a lot of things that have just been about my, you know, for me personally about my last few years, um, yeah. which is something that I'm constantly exploring, which is myself. Uh, I, I imagine that'll get boring for some people at some point, but, but, you know, I, I, I'm very interested in, in a personal truth because it's, it's uh, my personal experience, uh, although it's my personal experience, um, you know, it speaks to what what it is to live to live this life that we live. Um, so I'm, I'm just trying to explore that uh, for myself. But I, I understand how it can be beneficial to other people to speak that truth. There's a, I've, I've written in sort of like my song notes. Uh, so obviously, like you've mentioned, I knew you and uh, City's Face, the much slower jam, uh, all about past relationships. And they're quite vulnerable and open. Is it is it hard for you to write like that? Or is it sort of cathartic? How is it for you? It's terribly easy. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I only, Pour it all. it's, it's easy to write write it but it's it's not easy to say it and but the thing is is when you when you uh you know when you're when you're trying to break this filter for years or you know for me it's really i've been working on you know breaking this filter in myself to 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 stop being afraid to saying the things that we are afraid to say because finding some truth is being honest with ourselves and being honest with the people around around us so writing those songs <clears throat> it's not hard to write them but it's hard to get to a place that they that i feel that i can say it clearly and 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 that it that i need to say it if that makes sense because because these songs are not just reflective on myself they're reflective on someone else and and in those situations you don't want to you don't want to hurt someone else unless it's because you have something to say um, and, and really that takes time to get to that place where you can be honest, not just about what, what this person did, um, but what you yourself did, you know, or else you're not telling the full story, you know, cause even when you're, even when you're speaking about relationships and things like that, you're still speaking your biased truth, you know, it's not, <laughs> it's not necessarily what happened. And we get, we get things twisted in our heads, victims. Um, and, and I've, and I feel that I've done that in the past. So it was really, I, you know, I've, I've really been working honest and, and balanced in my view to put, to put blame on myself where that is due and to understand, uh, what, what that all means, but, but the songs write themselves, you know, but it hurts to say them, but that's, that's when you, you know, it's a good song. If it hurts, if it makes, makes you go, Ooh. Or it makes you cry, you know. Uh, I knew you made me cry when I wrote that song. It was just like, ooh, ooh, is knowing that it's going to transfer, that it's going to that it's going to hit someone else, you know. And that that's that's a that's a powerful feeling. And uh, physical and emotional reaction that you can actually feel when you hear. And, and hear the lyrics um there was such a an amazing turnaround it's in plastic beach i'm going to read the lyrics that i i really loved um to be loved to be one to be loved to feel some now i see i see tomorrow uh and i see oh wait it was the next one um i spent a change and then it's i i see i see tomorrow what you you saw oh my god this is blowing my mind it's so uplifting I mean, it's so open, but then it ends so important um, on a mental health note with with yeah. artists who are going through a lot today and not seeing what other people can see in them, especially if they're making incredible art. Uh, when did you come to that moment? What? How did Plastic Beach come about for you? 
I mean, yeah, pl- I mean, Plastic Beach is really, you know, Plastic Beach is actually about uh, uh, it. It's it's it's, it's broader term. It's uh, or I guess in its close terms, it's it's about body image um, and kind of um, issues that I've had with myself. It's about body dysmorphia, uh, body um, and those those things about not being able to even accept like the compliments that we're given, like just the way we are sometimes, the way we we brush aside the things uh, that people say about us because we have our own vision of ourselves. We have our own, we have, you know, it's like when I tell my partner she's beautiful, I want her to believe me and I want her to feel beautiful. I want her to like, but when she says it back to me, I just think about what I can change about myself, you know? And when, when I look in a mirror and I see the, the, the things that, that like my own parents are there, you know, like, like the people that I love are there in, in me. And why would I want to change that? You know what I mean? So it still hits me, you know, cause it's very, it's very real. And I think it's something that, uh, that a lot of us do because we, we don't, we don't know how to accept love. Like we don't know because we haven't found that in ourselves, you know, so much, so much about, uh, that, uh, you know, issues that go on in our heads, our depressions and our anxieties come from these, these issues that, that are deep within ourselves. And, you know, it's, it's about, uh, trying to explore that and accept other people's visions of, uh, positive visions of us that they, that, that the way they see us accepting someone else's, uh, vision of beauty, um, and not, not just holding ourselves to the standards that we have been taught since we were children, you know, exactly. Because it matter, you know, <laughs> it's like if you have somebody, and if you have somebody you love, it, preach it, preach it. Preach it. Uh, uh, with the shins, which is amazing. Luby Barrett on the record club page says, "Sam, what song are you most proud of on the?" Oh, they're all. <laughs> Um, I don't know. Like, I mean, honestly, Glada, Glada for its poetry. I think the painter for its hidden message. Maybe I hit it too much, but uh, but uh, ooh, ooh, what about thrill? Thrill, ooh, Can- message painter. Well, I. I, I didn't think it was so hidden, but I think I think later I realized maybe it was too hidden. But I mean, the painter is really the painter is actually a song about uh, race in America and the idea of color. It's about the uh, the way the painter sees what the the painter paints what they see, or they paint what they want to see. You know, they they paint the picture as. Uh, Oof, I get I get supercharged. I mean, the the thing is, is those those ideas of of people that say they don't see color are often the people that are preaching against like equality. Or, you know, it's like you well, you should see color and you should understand how it affects people's lives and how the the overarching um, power of white supremacy that is built like the Western society and how it still affects us today and especially in America. Um, you know, America, which is built on the genocide of native peoples and built up by the enslavement of on the backs of the enslavement of African peoples, still doesn't even recognize its truth. It doesn't even recognize its history. It wants to it wants to hold it wants to hold on to its history and its legacy, but it doesn't even actually speak the truth of that history. So the painter the painter doesn't see. <laughs> that's the whole thing the painter paints their picture of their world but they don't they don't always actually see it and but the bigger idea is just that you know when i was a kid um and when right before i went off to art school i was sitting on the beach uh with a really good friend of mine um and <laughs> we were we were looking at the clouds and i said that cloud looks like that and he said that cloud no that cloud looks like that and it's like well, how are we looking at the same thing and we see it so differently? And I was going off to school and I was like, you know, what would be really cool is if you could create an image that everyone saw the same way. Like, how do you do that? How do you create an image that, every, that the whole world sees the same way? But it made me think, you know, in this current 
society, it's like art, art is subjective and we put ourselves into art and we see ourselves in it or we take what we want from it. But, you know, so art is subjective, but people's lives should never be treated in the same way. I don't see how we, we look at the same exact picture, but we see such different things. We, you know, it should have never, we should never see different things when we're talking about people's lives and the loss of people's lives at the hands of police, at bad systems, you know, systems of oppression that just like keep people from getting what they need to survive. Like, anyway, yeah, there, there's a lot in there for me. Uh, I was going to say, me. this is a whole nother, a whole no, no. Another episode, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. um, wow, well, yeah, okay. So the pains are definitely uh, a big one on on the record, huge. Um, no, I put that as on my list as one of my faves. Um, so we've got Simon Whitehouse on Future Islands page. Of the painter on a stream of you and me. What was the inspiration? Oh, we've already answered that. What was the inspiration for the song? Uh, are there any plans to show the live stream again? Um, there are no plans to... Uh, thanks for tuning in, Simon. Um, there are no plans to share it again. Uh, it might be something that we look to release like in the distant future. But I mean, honestly, we didn't. We were really holding off on doing a live stream um, because we really hoped at the beginning of all this that by the time that record came out, there might be some shows again. Two and a half, three months ago, we realized that's not going to happen. So. We wanted to put something together and, and really it was about kind of celebrating um celebrating the the release the the work that we did and celebrating it with the people that have so, so it, it one day it'll be out before before i'm 75. oh wow <laughs> oh uh, counting down the days yeah, yeah he's gonna yeah. have like a tally on his wall now <laughs> All right, Dan Moran on Official Charts says, Sam, can you talk about the story behind the song I Knew You? It's one of my favorite tracks of the new album. Um, oof. That story is messed up. And it was kind of goes about... Um, oof, yeah, I, I put a lot into these songs, but that song was really just with uh, someone that I hadn't seen for many, many, many years. It's someone who is canon in Future Islands music, you know, um, uh, a relationship that I went through at the very beginning, you know, all of an evening was about the, the kind of the grieving process of, of this person. And there's songs spattered around. But the thing was, when we split up in the end of 2008, we didn't speak for five years, not not because that's what I wanted. Um, it was kind of this, there was never, uh, long story short, there was never any closure. She just kind of turned off the radio and there was no connection. We, there, there was, uh, and, you know, and then after five years, uh, around the time singles came out, um, she wanted to finally meet after all these years. And we had, we had a, it was a very emotional meeting, you know, a lot of just crying. And, you know, I, I met her with her, her new partner. And and it was really nice, but you know it wasn't like I had feelings anymore. But of course, I have these deep, long feelings of just a uh, you know a person who was uh, my best friend, really cared for, and had this history with that was just gone. So it was all these kinds of flooding emotions. Uh, fast forwarding another six months, I'm seeing her for the second time. I'm back through the city that she lives in now, and uh, uh, she comes out. Go back to uh, we or we're hanging out afterwards. We go to a bar. You know, she's like, "Let's hang out." Because the first time we didn't really hang out. We just saw each other a little bit. She came to a show. The boyfriend. She left. The second time, we really like talked, talked a lot, and then went to a bar. Went to drinking beers at a, in a graveyard. Which she's an old school goth girl. So this was like, oh, this is like our first date. Um, you know, uh, yeah, the classic and, place to have a drink as well. <laughs> our first date was in a graveyard, so I'm like, Well, we're back here in another city in a graveyard drinking beers. And she really just like laid into me at this point. And you know, we've been hanging out for hours and and we're getting along really well. And it felt good because it was like, Yeah, you know, this is I'm not crazy. Like for the last five years, I 
you know, I was like, I thought I had this good friendship with this person. And I know we split up, but it was, it, you know, was that real? Did that even happen? So then, so then I'm in this situation. Really start I poisoned her life. I, I hurt her and so it's worse. And finally things are all back together. Um, sorry, I'm just, I'm really, the thing was, since I poisoned your life, um, and you know, and, and I felt good, like it was finally the thing of a person releasing themselves of their, it was like the thing that I needed to hear, which is basically like, I hate you. And I was like, thank you for, for saying that. And, you know, I, I thought, thought you hated me. I just wish you would have told me that fuck. Five years ago, place where she asked me to stay, I said no. I should go. Your boyfriend's out of town. No, no, just sleep in the bed. It doesn't matter. Nothing's going to happen. I'm like, yeah, nothing's going to happen. And so I went to sleep. And then when I woke up, there was a phone in my face. It was a picture of my my wallet, my keys, and my cell phone. On so I'm, I'm the phone in my face. She just says, uh. I'm like, what is this? I've been asleep for like two and a half hours. I'm like, what is this? She's like, it's it's your stuff from downstairs. And I'm like, why are you showing this? And he's like, he came home. And I was like, what? And because he was he's supposed to be like uh, eight hours away. On, on, I feel like I'm mad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you know what I did was I immediately touched my face because I was like, am I bleeding? Do I? <laughs> if, am I alive? And then I and then she said, what if long flight was about you which is an old it's a song from our second album what the fuck i'm sorry i don't know if i can curse you <laughs> what are you talking about and he's like he's outside and i was like well let me go talk to him like nothing happened and she's like he is going to kill you if he sees you and i'm like but nothing nothing happened we didn't kiss nothing happened so so then so then she was like and so i got my stuff together went downstairs uh out the back door and just took off just like took how did off. you get all your stuff your did he have it is that why he she came, had a photo he came he came inside and saw that my stuff was there and then was just like went outside and you know called her like hey what what is going on and i felt terrible yeah. because i never meant to hurt this person but then i felt like a pawn you know what i mean like oh she did this to make me get my ass kicked this <laughs> or, is a very intense story i feel like it i feel like this story is insane but the whole thing was so so over, over this time from the first time we to this time you know she had told me how you know it really bothered her that i just kind of been dragging these i basically built a career on songs that were about relationship and and i, I had been really going through this you know myself is it is that to use you know to use these things in my life if they involve someone else you know is that is that messed up so i was i was having trouble playing songs like tin man in that period i was like telling the guys i don't want to and that's been a staple of ours for a long time mm. um uh, and it was like i don't want to play that and the guys were like okay i mean it's a banger but if you don't like if you feel weird i i just like i feel sick playing it now like i feel like i'm hurting this person anyways long this happened and then i was like okay <laughs> I'm writing this is going down. <laughs> this is a song right here. Like, like, like I don't know what this person just did. It's a that's I knew you. Sorry for that long answer. And that's it's, the song. <laughs> Everybody. Just, like, and, and you know, I wrote pages on this too, because I was like, there's so many details, but you yeah, you out. need a short film on that with the with the song. You just <laughs> need to do it. You need to do it. Everything. I mean, I can just picture. And from Chris Cotterman on Future Islands page, who says, thanks for doing this. I was wondering how the band's various solo works if you bring to the band. You all seem really supportive of each other's work, which is very cool. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, he's actually been creating solo records um, probably since 2004 or five. Like, I think even before... Uh, Future Islands existed when we were doing our very first band, Art Lord and the Self Portraits. So Garrett has Moss, Moss of Aura, 
which is, I mean, he's, I think, done nine or ten albums now. So he has a really deep discography. William has had Peels, uh, which was a group with his friend uh, Bruce Nolan, uh, uh, Bruce Nolan, Bruce from Double Dagger, uh, Bruce Willen. And uh, and now his soul, he just put out his first solo album. And then uh, and then I, I do my rap stuff. But that's just been a part of, you know, that's something that's been a part of me since oh, like. I started writing verse when I was 14. Yeah, I heard that's how you started. Yeah, yeah. And that's been, you know, that's how I discovered words. That's how I fell in love with poetry. Um, kind of found myself uh, as a musician, you know. I wanted to be an artist. Like, that's that's how I, I envisioned myself as a visual artist. And then music was something I was going to do, but it wasn't really my drive. And within, you know, two, two and a half, three years, I really flunked myself out of school. <laughs> I still have music and music's been good to me and and I love to perform you know Future Islands was just beginning so it's one of those things that uh, I think it's really important to explore yourself individually you know um, working within a group is also really important learning to like I was saying before like compromise um, understand another person's point of view be open to new ideas be open to criticisms um, and uh, you know not just <laughs> Not just get really mad when someone says, "What if we did this?" But <laughs> but but the, the solo work uh, in particular is really about not having any of that and kind of trying to trust your instincts. So I think they're both kind of important to one another. Like Future Islands, when I before and before Art Lord and the Self Portraits, I was just like, you know, this freestyle MC who could go on for days and, and you know, but I didn't say anything like it was it was all like tongue twisters and language uh but I, but i but it wasn't until after years of writing where i i kind of got away from hip-hop for a while from 2008 to 2012 when i came back at the end of 2012 i started writing verse again um because i was missing it i'm like man i haven't written a rap i've been on the road for five years so i haven't written any rap and uh i found that I was actually saying something I was, and I was writing in song instead of just, just writing these long form crazy verse because because Future Islands had taught me how, how to be a songwriter. But but hip hop gave me a voice to be in Future Islands and Art Lord before that. Really quick question before we finish. Would you, do you ever incorporate your rap or maybe spoken word or poetry into Future Islands future? future music well the poetry is in there and the spoken word future island song hey never say never never say pure, never i'm a purist <laughs> that is all we have time for today thank you so much sam for joining us and yeah. if you haven't got yourself a copy of as long as you are we absolutely recommend ordering one from your local record shop Shop. It's such a solid return from Future Islands and a really brilliant album section. I am also very excited to announce that the winner of this week's seven over in noise cancelling amazing headphone prize is drum roll. Uh, we have Simon Whitehouse from Future Islands page. Huge round of yeah party poppers going off <laughs> everywhere uh, so make sure to keep your dms open and we'll be getting those to you um, for joining us and sending in your questions join us again wednesday the 4th of november 30 p.m where our next guest will be revealed on the record club socials shortly so make sure to follow all of those as well record club uk thank you for listening thank you sam thank you so much jess it was a 